Howdy folks, welcome back to another exciting video. Today we are working on this one owner 1968 Cadillac Coupe DeVille. It's been sitting here for quite some time and it's actually parked at the original owner's house. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. It's been in the same family since it was brand spanking new. It needs some help. We're gonna try and get it to run, drive, stop, and be used as a car once again by the same family. It, it came here because we were living, they, they were living in town at first. And when I was born, she brought, they brought me here. And this car, they don't, they, when I had the 64, that's when my mother took to California. That was when she was going to college out there. So she took this car out there. That, that, that's when they bought this car, which is this one here. And like I said, when I was born, I came straight from Nashville, straight here to this house. And this car and I both have been in this location for the last however many years I am old. <laughs> so, and then she, of course, the car being a 68, it's older than I am. So it was, it's been here longer than I have, so. Oh, hey! <laughs> there it is. Thing goes for the front. Yeah. I'm gonna try and put this donut on there. There's two in the trunk, you know, people I've gotten over the years, people give me say, hey, you might need this. And yeah. So I got like an extra set that people give me. Sure, and we can uh, do that. Uh, That's some truck brakes. Good lord. Stole this out of the Roadmaster up there. <laughs> I don't have anything that'll fit this car. Please, Lord, let this fit. That looks like it'll work. <clears throat> mm, sounds good and squeaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, we're on a hill right now, and I want to try and at least load it on my trailer that way, and I'd hate to have to load it on backwards because the gap between the rear bumper and the rear tire is like, you know, three miles long. I don't want to drag the bumper. I'm going to try and fill up this master cylinder with a little brake fluid. It's empty right now, and the pedal goes to the floor, and uh, see if we can at least get it to hold enough to get down to the bottom of the driveway, into the road, and then lined up with the trailer. Yeah, she was low. Makes me think that maybe a wheel cylinder is leaking or, I mean, heck, sometimes it just disappears. I've had it happen. <laughs> so the brakes don't work, but the parking brake seems to work. I hear something moving. So we're gonna try and put it in neutral. That's good. Well, hang on. Well, this old land barge, she's on the trailer. I'm excited to see what we can do with it. Uh, luckily, we don't have very far to go, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get her back home, get her up on the lift, and see what we can make happen. My father worked for General Motors, and back in the back then, he, they said that if there was, their slogan was, if there was ever a car to be built that was the best, Cadillac would build it. If there was something that could be built better, Cadillac would build it. And General Motors, they had a good reputation back then. And my father, he was uh, a technician. They would, anytime they would have something new to come out, they would always send him off to somewhere to learn how to repair it and then bring him back. And he would have that, that knowledge there for the shop here in town for Mr. Roy. And, uh, but no, that we've always had Buicks and Cadillacs as long as we were driven. And, uh, but most of the time, it's always been a Cadillac. It's been, like I said, we had the 60, this 63 or 64, then it went to 68. Then we had a 73. Uh, all these are Coupe de Ville's, like this one. And then we had the 76. I bought a 76. And they, my mom, mom and dad, they bought an 80 model Sedan de Ville. And then they had, my mom bought an 83 Sedan de Ville. And then she had the 89 Sedan de Ville. And that was the last Cadillac she bought. I'm gonna try our best to be careful here. All I've got is parking brake. 
So we'll do our best not to die. <laughs> We've got the car back in the shop and as you can see there's just a lot of stuff going on. We've got parts just kind of scattered everywhere. We've got new fuel lines here. Um, I think that goes to the carburetor. Golly, what is this? Half inch? Jeez, that's massive. Then, uh, then we got a new fuel pump here. Uh, some gaskets, carb gaskets, carb studs, which we're not going to get to use because this is a quadrajet. Just the glove box is full of hardware. We've just got random bags of just bolts and stuff. That's going to be the hard part of this whole thing is trying to put everything back together to get it to where it can run again. But I did notice something fun whenever I was actually looking through the glove box. found a uh, cassette for Tupac. I get around. So bumping some really good quality tunes in here while we're doing it. The interior is honestly very very nice like i've dealt with way worse interiors uh reggie said that it was redone at some point he told me what year but i forgot pretty comfortable the headliner looks great the seats look great he said the door panels weren't really that great in the carpet but i mean for what it is it's not that bad at all i'm really excited to see if this thing can run get on the lift and see if we have any rust underneath but that's the first part we got to get it to run the carburetor is laying in here he told me that it was gone through Said that they went through and looked at it, checked it out, made sure it was okay, and it didn't look bad on the inside. But I guess we're just gonna have to find that out for ourselves. 1973, I'd say it would be at this feast right here. I love bacon, and my mom um, cooked bacon <clears throat> at, the, at the, the, the Sheraton that morning before we went to church. And she made a bacon sandwich for my, for my aunt and uncle. Well, I had already eaten, but after I got in the car and smelled their food in this car, they wouldn't let me have it to have a bite of theirs. <laughs> I I remember in this car, I was in I was in the middle, and of course I had the armrest down, and I was sitting on the armrest. That's how small I was. So I, since they wouldn't let me have anything, I remember turning around, sitting in the back, and just looking out the back end. And I was always looking at the trunk and the fins, and that was that was like I'm like wow. The seat was had the, has the hump on it, and I was sitting across. And I remember sitting here and I was looking out. That was that was my first memory, and of, of this car, and then we had a. There was a flood here in town. I think it was in 74, 75, I can't remember what year it was. And my mom called my dad. We were on the opposite side and we were trying to come home out here on this side. And he was at Mr. Roy's at work. So she, we, she went back up to the hill and called him and asked how could we get home or go into that water. And I remember the water, it was up to here. And I was on the other side, I had the window down and I, I had my hand, I, I could reach out and touch it, but I didn't. But I said, wow, that's a lot of water. And it, it shocked me that it was going through it. But my mom wanted to know how could she get through it. And he, my dad told her to keep her foot on the brake, keep the brakes hot, and keep her foot on the gas, and just come on through it, just plow through it. And we would come right through that water. I could still see it now when we was going through that water. All that water, it'd be like, all that water is, is just on both sides. And it was, it was everywhere. That was, that was crazy. But we went through that, and then no water got inside, and it was up to here. Like I said, I could reach out this one, and I could touch it, not this one, but the other side. But yeah, the, the it was it was it was neat. But it, it, and it came through, it didn't choke out. Nothing, nothing was wrong with it. But so. well, before we get too crazy, I want to see if does anything work at all. This car is super comfortable. <laughs> These seats are so nice and plush. We've got one light, and that is the oil light. So that's cool. At least tells us that we have oil pressure low, or at least non-existent because it's not running. I hear things clicking, but I don't think they're working right now. But the horn. Oh, good Lord. See if we have any headlights. Oh, looks like we do have headlights, ladies and gentlemen. We've got that marker light, so that's good. How about up front? 
Yep, headlights and one turn signal light looks like, but not the other side. Dude, where is the dipstick? Oh, there it is. Ugh. How do we look? Oh yeah, dude, it looks brand new. I don't think it's ever been ran. We've got a spark plug chilling out right here. And uh, we're gonna hopefully say it's grounded. I'm gonna try and spin it over now and just see if any spark happens. <laughs> Nothing. Is that a Cadillac thing to just sound really chunky? There's a spark plug wire that goes under the control arm. How's that even possible? I think I have a brand new set of points for a GM distributor. We're gonna try it. Tell me when. I'm ready. Ha, <laughs> ah, funny. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. This is an old points 350 distributor that I kept out of a Chevelle. I put a different one in it, so I'm just gonna swap these points over. Well, these contacts were a little bit corroded, so we popped those new ones in, and we're gonna see now if it doesn't need any adjusting at all. Briar, you tell me if you see some spark. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good? Oh yeah. Sweet. Is that a freaking trumpet? <laughs> it's like an old vintage horn, look at that. So it's got the dual horn here and then it's got a dang old trumpet. Whoa. It does sound cool though. I had an accident graduation night and I totaled with my other car, I had a Buick Electra 225 73 model. And I jumped the ditch and I made, a, I made a mess. I made a big mess. I tore up a man's bridge, tore up my car. The front wheel was under the seat right here. It was in the front seat. The steering wheel went to the... It was bad. It was a very bad accident. Well, after I told that car, I didn't have a vehicle, and this one was parked here under the tree. Nobody was driving it. It hadn't been cranked or anything. After my brother drove it, he and got his... went to college and came back. He got his cars and trucks, and he parked the car. So he, it was never driven after that. So it was set for probably... I'd say eight years, seven, eight years. And then after I had that accident, my dad and I would came out here and we got it cranked up and got it running. And I drove it 70, didn't have no issues with it all the way up there. And uh, after that, he, I got it and I started working on it, cleaning it up and painting it, getting it, doing things to it. And I've had it ever since. This is a quadrajet of sorts. And uh, the first thing I noticed was that one, we're missing some vacuum caps and two, the secondaries are stuck. So that's a good way to start it off. So I have to get those unstuck before we bolt it on. He did stick some stuff on top of it to make sure it doesn't get stuff in it, but we gotta clean it off. So the intake has a bunch of just trash and looks like an animal was trying to live in there. And then we need to clean that gasket surface off. I'm gonna need you to just cooperate, please. What in the world is going on with this? Everything's falling apart. We need this to work. Little trick I learned from a Thunderhead 289. You can use some chapstick or petroleum jelly. Your gasket's from sticking real bad. So I'm gonna use my chapstick here because I'm gonna assume this carburetor's gonna have to come off. Let's go with our fancy comedic gasket right there where it belongs. <laughs> what is your deal, man? Dude, this thing is stuck. I don't wanna force them open. But you gotta kinda work them back and forth to do something. Something's in a bind, Briar. I don't know what it is. I don't know about that. I think something's hitting somewhere. I'm, I'm gonna take it apart. Let go, let go. You know what, just, just like that, we're gonna rebuild it anyway. That's not good. I, I, don't, I don't know if, he had it sent off to somebody and I don't know if they even did anything to it besides just look at it. Yeah, nobody has looked inside this carburetor from what I can tell. It's full of chalk, basically. Is that not just terrible? Man, somebody told him that they looked in it, but they actually didn't. Look at the accelerator pump. Diaphragm. Oh, that's terrible. Like, that's not good. He said he had somebody look at this carburetor, put it back together, and say it was fine. Wow. What a scam. Look at this. 
old gas deposited in there. That kind of hurts my feelings that somebody would say that they did that and they actually didn't do it. Like, look, the rod's been sitting in schmutz for who knows how long. People, man, I tell you, we'll just have to finish taking this thing apart and uh, really, really deep clean it. This float uh, finally came out. It was fighting me, but you can see inside the bowl there, it's bad. And I'm honestly a little bit nervous about this because we're gonna try and clean it, but I, I don't know. I mean, this stuff has just turned to straight powder at this point. I mean, look at that on the end of my finger there. It's pretty bad, and it's all up in here, like within the needle and seat and the float, everything around it is really, really bad. Um, all the rods and everything are just really gummed up. We're gonna try our best to clean it and see if we can make this thing work. But as of right now, my expectations are, well, very low. We're gonna do a mixture of pine saw and water to see if that actually will do anything. I've seen a lot of reviews on this and using this method. I know there's a million ways to clean these carburetors, but it's about midnight right now and I wanted to soak this overnight just to see how it does. Then we can dilute it with about the same amount of water for a good 50-50 mix. Well, it's been about 12 hours since we dropped this in the bucket. It's a little hard to see in there, but uh, you can see stuff kind of floating in the top. Uh, again, this pine saw is not as strong as it could be. We had to really add a bunch of water to make it cover up everything, but I can definitely see stuff floating in the water. So we're just gonna let it sit. I mean, there's still a lot of red residuals up here that have to come off, but I hope it's going the right direction. Before I had the car located, I had it at my mother's store in the, out in the West End, and uh, I, it was on the car cover, and I had it covered up, and it stayed out there for all the years. I'd go out there, crank it up, and, and just, you know, I would drive it up and make sure that the brakes weren't locked up or anything like that, and I would just crank, get it warm. And uh, I would drive it, matter of fact, I would drive it across the street into the projects over there, and I'd do that little loop and circle. I'd just keep circling around, circling around because I didn't have a tag on it. So I'd circle around that, that loop, and I'd bring it back and park it and cover it back up. And I did that while I was working out there, and then when I left from there, and I was working at Trotters, I had opened up Trotters out there. I was not cranking it up, but then after I'd left, people knew that I wasn't out there. But I don't know who stole the carburetor, but someone stole the carburetor off of it and the trim off the other side. And uh, they, I don't, I don't know what all they did to it, but anyway, it was, I couldn't drive it until I could find, actually find a carburetor that would fit it. Got some of the sediment out though. I mean, it was, it was in there good, and at least it'll smell good. It dissolved some of it. I think it's just not uh, enough of like a concentration because I didn't have enough pine salt in these. You. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that stuff's not breaking loose at all. And that was 14, 13, 14 hours of soaking in pine salt and water, and it still looks the same pretty much. Golly! <laughs> Stuck in there. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna have to clean my case for a new one. So I guess good news in kind of an odd way. The carburetor was stolen, which was original to the car, and uh, Reggie had gone and bought a new one off of a, I think he said a 67 Cadillac. And unfortunately, that carburetor, though it looked good on the outside, as you saw, was just not good on the inside. So I found this. This was on Amazon and it was like 200 bucks for a brand new Quadrajet, and it had pretty good reviews. So why not just go ahead and start fresh and not have to worry about anything that was going on with that carburetor over there, because it wasn't good. And look, we have secondaries. How about that? So that's gonna help a lot and actually make this thing go, because we're gonna need all the carburetor we can get to move a boat like this. I'm gonna check this thing over, make sure the settings are right, We'll bolt it on the car and then see if it'll fire up. Because good news is Reggie took the time before he parked it, he changed the spark plugs, the plug wires, and changed the oil. And it's been sitting for quite a long time, but it really hasn't ran since then. So at least all this stuff that we would normally have to do has already been done. Well, here's what we're working with. The carburetor bolted on, had to modify the linkages on the throttle just a little bit to make it work. The fitting size on this thing was really big in comparison to what was on the old carburetor, but it just so happens this fuel line that Reggie had bought for the car was the right size, so thank goodness we had that right. It actually has to go down to the fuel pump, but there's no fuel pump. He bought a new one, and we haven't replaced it just yet. 
I just want to get it onto the lift is my main goal. And since we have spark, we just need some fuel. I'm going to run my electric pump out to this fuel line that I just stuck on there. It's supposed to go, you know, under the AC compressor and down over here, but I just stuck it on here so I can put rubber hose to an electric pump to a tank. Have you seen a more beautiful fuel line in your life? Look at that. Now that's art. Get it running all the way to our fuel tank down here in front of the bumper. And we're going to just see, will it hit at all? Ah, the fuel isn't hooked up. Or the, the pedal, I forgot. Just see if it just sprays anything. Oh, it's spraying. Oh! <laughs> Come on, baby. I still have a plug off. Yeah, I still have this one off. Let me put that back on so we can have all eight. Gonna need all we can get. Oh, it wants to. Oh. Throttle linkage is hooked up now. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> Got a rocker arm, kind of noisy. But it's running. How's the sound out back? Not too bad. Sweet. Okay. We need a return spring. Oh, there it is. It's right there. I didn't see it. Have to figure out how to rig that up. It honestly sounds pretty good back here. Not bad at all. Not bad at all, old girl. I'm proud of you. Let's see if it'll crank back now. Oh, dude, no way. This car is awesome. No, oh, come here. Oh, <laughs> it's way lower. There was some fluid on, yeah, see, there's a little bit on the stick, but it's, it's way low. And I'm assuming it's gonna probably need a third quart, but we're gonna crank it back up and check it again. See where it's at with two. See, this thing's so big. I'm gonna run out of lift. Get a little hot. <laughs> All right, we'll let her calm down for a minute. It did have to idle for a little while. We always went to the Feast of Tabernacles, so it was our, our religion. We were seventh day, keep, seventh day keepers, so we were Sabbath keepers. And every year we would always get, to, we'd always go somewhere. Uh, the, and we, my parents always go to the St. Petersburg. That's where the meeting would be held at. And usually three or four, sometimes five, six thousand people that would show up at the, at the church down there. And every year, that we would get the car ready. First thing we do is he'd take the car and he'd put new tires on it. And he would do the whole service, go through the whole, just because he was a mechanic. He did everything, new belts. He would change everything out. They would, and then they would load it down with the suitcases. And you talking about low. You think the car looks low now? You put up all those suitcases in the, in the trunk of the thing and it sets low, I mean low. And it would just float. We would go down there and I'd watch mama it, she'd drive at 75, 80, 90. And of course, back then, speed limit was 
what it was, but nobody paid any attention on the highways back then. But this car, mom would drive this car, and daddy, daddy didn't go with us. That'd be my mama and my grandmama, and uh, my aunt and uncle and me would be in here. <laughs> we would go down, like I said, we, we were, my mom, she never had a direction, but she would always follow somebody. She took this car to Minnesota. We had a, a SCP camp in Minnesota, and it was a church camp. And uh, each one of us got a, each one as got old enough, we could go to that camp. Well, this particular year, they were, she was almost late, and she was taking my aunt and uncle up there because they missed the bus. So she said, well, she just beat them up there. They said she drove this car 110 miles an hour from the time she got to Nashville. It stayed on 110 until they got to, to uh, Minnesota. She caught that bus, by the way. <laughs> She caught the bus, so where it would look like they all came in at the same time on the bus. And uh, yeah, they said she drove his car 100, 110 almost the whole way, all the way from here to Minnesota. I was like, that's crazy. How fa and it's like, and it didn't even hurt it. it. It was like, it was just what we built. And that's why we always, we've always had Cadillacs because you, you could drive them. You could, you could drive them and you could just drive the car and not have any issues with it. Unlike some other cars, you drive them and things happen. We're underneath the car and you can see that it's actually very original. Uh, we've got it lifted up on the front to do the brakes and I don't really see a whole lot of rust. I mean the frame looks clean, the oil pan is dry. Uh, I think I put too much transmission fluid in it because it's leaking a little bit now. But overall it's very original. You can see not very much rust. The only rust I can tell uh, is a little bit right there and there's just a little bit right up in this area. Other than that, it's it's really not that bad. I mean, very clean underneath, very rust-free, very original. Now, in the back, this is where I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna hope that it does. Uh, Reggie had actually dropped the tank and cleaned it. And he put a new sending unit in it with a new gasket with new hoses, and then the filler neck has a new hose in the back. So hopefully that'll hold up together and actually be able to be used. But overall, man, we're really impressed with how clean this thing is underneath and how good it is to be all original and doing what it is. Like I'm impressed with it. So very happy with what we have to start with, but we're gonna go ahead and get some brake work done to see if we can make this thing stop. That's not wheel bearing, so I think the adapters are bolted on tight. There we go. And it goes the opposite direction. Hey, Dixie. Hey. Here. You ready? Yeah. Me and Briar were just commenting on how big these brakes are. They're basically like semi truck brakes. Look at that. Please, please cooperate with me. You're doing so great so far. That's promising. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Holy moly, these things are huge. Plenty of material, though, and uh, plenty of spider webs, but that is perfectly doable. Well, he was truthing me. Look at there. All brand new, super thick uh, shoes here. We got plenty of material. Probably just spray these adjusters and clean them up a little bit. And uh, dude, that's that's perfect right there. I mean, look, the wheel bearing grease is still red, so it's basically brand new. Uh, all we're gonna do is just change out that little guy right there, because although the cups here look a little bit okay, they're not dry rotted, but it's very rusty on the inside of that wheel cylinder. So I don't want to chance anything when it comes to having to stop a car that is this big. Fronts are done. Let's move on to the back. Oh, that was a good one. Good one. Nice. Gracious. Oh, that's a spring. Uh oh. Where did you come from? Huh. Interesting. There's no adjuster in there. Uh, there's nothing there either. This one has the adjuster. All the uh, shoes look fantastic. Here's the rear brakes. Briar has gotten that sorted out. Again, the pads of the shoes look so good. I mean, they're basically brand new to where the point all we had to do was replace wheel cylinders. And I did have to replace this adjuster when we pulled the drum off. It was missing, so that one's good. And uh, the other side's done. So Briar, would you like to do the honors of putting it all back together? 
Nice. All that's left is the master cylinder. You gonna do that or me? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to defy me. No. Okay, well, thank you. There you go. There it is. How bad does it look? Eh. Oh! Hey, it's got liquid. I put that in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. What do you think, Dixie? Come here. What do you think? Did Brad do a good job? What do you think? We've got this fancy brand new fuel pump. Thankfully, it was just sitting in the car because the car did not have a fuel pump on it at all. So now, this ought to get the last piece of our puzzle to getting our fuel pump situation sorted out. And we're going to hope and pray <laughs> that this fuel tank is actually up to snuff and that it actually has clean enough to work. Well, since the carburetor was off of it, I was trying to get the, the things, that, since they, they cut the line, the, the fuel line, to the carburetor. So therefore I was trying to get that, since that, the original parts were still on the car, so I was having issues getting that line off, so I had to take off the alternator, the smog pump, uh, what else I take? I took off, those were the two things I think I had to take off in order to get that fuel pump off and put the, get a new fuel line to get it on there. And the fuel line, it took a little six months to get the fuel line in because it was on back order. So after I gotten started and then Dylan showed up to um, ask me if I wanted to sell it. And that was at the time, I, and I didn't want to sell it because it's got too much sentimental value to it. My mother had uh, passed away, uh, June McDonald, she passed away. And I didn't want, I knew people were gonna be coming to the house and, and bringing things and wanting to, to you know, give their condolences to us. So what I did, I had uncovered the car and washed it and had it sitting out here to where it would look clean so and presentable because everybody in town knows that it was my mom and dad's car. And I didn't want it to look bad when people would come up. So I had it uncovered and then this Dylan came by and saw it sitting out here because he said he'd never seen it before because it had been covered up. And because I kept it, <laughs> so nobody would be looking at it. And uh, so I had it uncovered and that's, this is where it looked and he had this, Dylan stopped in to check on it. He said, well, I wanted to sell it. And I said, no, I can't sell it. But that was the day my mom, I was actually uh, attending her funeral, was the day that Dylan showed up. And I couldn't talk to him right then at the time, but uh, we did get together and he got the car running for me. And I do appreciate Dylan so much for doing that for me. Well, we went and got six gallons worth of gas. We're just gonna put, I don't know, two or three in it. Go ahead. Pump it a couple times. Oh, come on. Go ahead. It's not picking up anything. We kept having trouble with not being able to pick up fuel. We've been going back and forth and back and forth trying to find out. And uh, this car actually has a supply and a return and the sending unit has been replaced on this tank. It might be hard to see up in there, but there are two lines coming out. And one line, as you can see, it's smaller. The return line was hooked up to the main feed line, and the main feed line was hooked up to the return line to the car. So Briar is gonna swap those around. We've got like five gallons in the tank, and it wouldn't run for nothing. And we were like on the verge of just dropping the tank and seeing what was wrong with it. Sure enough, it seems like that might be our fix. So once he gets those swapped around, We'll try it again. I'm gonna fill up the bowl as much as we possibly can. This is the last bit of gas we got. Everything else is in the tank, so we run out here. We're done for. Rev it up a little bit. It should have picked up fuel by now. We've got a tank right here on a stool and we're gonna use it to uh, actually try to run it through to the carburetor on the supply side. So Briar's up in the car right now and we're gonna see 
will it crank on this fuel jug? I don't know if this is OSHA approved. I'm making Briar do it. I'm not as limber as he is. Just dump it all in there. Now he makes his way back. Can he do it? Oh, this is the easy part? Oh. A little confident here. Hold it part way too. Oh, it wants to so bad. One more time. If it doesn't work this time, we're dropping the tank, Briar. I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know. Talk about athletic. <laughs> you weren't supposed to film that. Let it come down. I unhooked the line and hooked it back to the tank. So Briar's gonna fire it up. Now that the bowl is full, we're gonna see if it'll run on its own supply or run out again. Terrible. It's running weird, man. Which the timing's probably way too low, I would bet. Giving my car a steam bath over here. We got a fuel leak. Whoops, oh, it's coming out the return. It's, it's back and it's running, it's drivable. It's, it sounded good. <laughs> it looked very good when you turned in, it was like, Hey, Daddy's coming home. <laughs> Cause Mom, he he drove this car to work, you know, every day uh, for years, years he drove this car, and Daddy he never. It's like he, it's like his foot never was heavy on the car. If Daddy got in the car, it never got up to 50, 50, maybe fifty five. It didn't. No, he never got over fifty. He never got up to fifty five. <laughs> Daddy just eased his car around. It just eased in, eased out. And I said, now that I'm older. I think that's how I'll be driving it. I'll be easing it in, easing it out. brake booster leaks pretty severely you can hear it hissing inside the car so uh, it didn't do that before uh, when we hooked it up it's like yeah I'm gonna leak pretty bad so we'll probably have to take the booster off replace it but hey at least it stopped itself and at least it's running on its own fuel supply at this point so you know what that's a major win for us in the right direction so we've got a huge vacuum leak and the brakes do not work good at all I mean you got to max out the pedal so that's where we got this. It literally cost 80 bucks to get this brake booster. I'm kind of mad because I want brake boosters that cheap. So we've got Briar. He is contorted to get up under the car. He's a little bit smaller than me, so he can get up in there easier. Oh, there we are. Mm. Yeah, a little rusty, a little nasty. So it would have pedal engagement. It did move the rod, but there's probably just some kind of leak inside the diaphragm itself. Am I supposed to take this off? I think I am. I don't need that, do I? I 
I managed to invent the first variable valve timing Cadillac. I was trying to get this thing to come unstuck and the distributor so I could actually like, you know, tune it. <laughs> and unfortunately, I pried up on it a little too hard and the base just split in half. So I'm gonna have to get a new distributor. I did get it to rotate. I had to pull the AC compressor off, put some vice grips on it. So it's at least unlocked from the block. We just have to figure out how to get it out of here. I know that it has to twist as it comes out. It's just a matter of, can we make it do that? I hope so. Well, we've resorted to the good old fashioned pickle fork here. Uh, I have actually made it to come up maybe half an inch to three quarter of an inch now. It has moved and it does rotate a little bit better, but gosh, I'm just worried that I'm gonna like pull it out of the, the distributor gear, like for the oil pump. But this is the only thing that's making it move right now. I've tried prying on it, I've tried chipping it away. Nothing is working. Oh, 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 come on. There we go. Dang. It's out there. My pickle fork's welded into it, <laughs> but it's out of there. That's what it takes sometimes to get these things out of here. Luckily, the whole thing came out. I didn't see anything wrong with it. No damage occurred inside the engine and the intermediary shaft for the oil pump is still in place. So we should be good on that front. I'm gonna keep the contacts because those are new. Thankfully, O'Reilly had one. So that's on the way. And this will be just a nice little core. Hopefully they don't care if it's coming into two pieces, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Thankfully, it's not just me having a hard time. Briar's under here struggling which I get it. I think your job was actually harder than mine. He had to quadruple stack the ratchets here with the extensions just to actually get this thing to work. But you're on the last bolt, right? I'm putting the brake pedal back on. Nice. Well, I would say we could fire it up and test it, but- Somebody broke it. I broke it. Well, to keep this from happening again, I'm gonna use some Rogo high temp anti-seize and just spray it on all the bushing surfaces, basically. Last thing I wanna do is be breaking distributors out of here another time. And we'll slide this thing in and I had it to where it was pointing pretty much opposite of the valve cover uh, in this direction towards me. So I'm going to line it up just a little bit ahead and see if they slide right back in into place. There we go. Battery's hooked up. We've got the distributor back in. Should have our firing order right. And I'm going to try to adjust the timing before we put the AC compressor back on. So go ahead, Briar. Yeah, there you go. We do in fact have spark. I'm gonna advance it really far out of the way. And if it makes it run, I know I need to rotate my plug wires around. All right, go ahead. Heck, it could be out of gas for all we know. Even though it didn't run to this spot. It's just the choke is open and that's not helping anything. All right, go ahead. Oh, try again. Oh, try again. Whoa, what the heck was that? Try again. Timing's mad. Try it now. Too much timing. That's all the way bottomed out. I've marked number one, and I'm gonna rotate these plug wires around one terminal and see if that helps. Um, or it might be better off just uh, actually removing the distributor and trying to knock it over a tooth. The best it's ever idled cold, ain't it? That's solid right there. Hey, pull it down in gear and see how low it idles. Just pull it in, re in reverse, I guess. We'll see if the brakes work better now. Better? Really? Good, good, good. Might idle it up a little bit or turn the timing up some. Okay, well good, go ahead and cut it off where it gets too hot. 
That's much better. See how it cranks hot now. That's good. That's really good. Much, much better. Awesome. Well, that fixed that. Being able to adjust the timing can do a whole lot of help in there, don't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't that crazy how, I mean, just to be able to adjust the timing, we had to <laughs> break the distributor in two pieces. But, we, yeah. Well, I did do it. I did. Yeah. What? I, if I am correct, I did see a pry bar in your hand, but that might not be on camera, so I you can't prove it. it. I did tell you to do it, and you get paid to do that, so I guess I can't say much. I had that, that tag, the, the tag was 14K RAM. And my high school teacher back then, I, I used to have a lot of gold, a lot of jewelry. And I wore, I think I probably had eight or 10, maybe 12 necklaces on. And they would tell me it just looked like Mr. T starter kit, if anyone knows Mr. T. But I had bracelets and I had rings on every finger. And I, I looked like a modern day pimp, in other words. But anyway, I would go to, I had art class in high school. And Miss Patsy Raby, she would call me OG over gold. And she, she started calling me 14K. So I said, 14K, yeah, 14K, 14K RAM. I said, yeah, that sounds real good. 14K RAM, we'll put that on a tag. So that's what I did. And when I got a personalized tag, Miss Raby, she was the one that gave me that name, 14K RAM. And, it, and, and that stands for my initials, because I had a lot of, everything was 14 karat or, or better. And um, she gave me that name, 14 karat gold RAM. Briar's pulling the thermostat housing so we can put a new thermostat in it. We've got our pulleys, we've got all their belts on, the alternator's bolted in, the air pump is bolted in. We're making progress right now, folks. The distributor is not broken into two pieces. I mean, yet. Yet, well, yeah, yet. Oh, oh, well. Oh, perfect. Very nice. Look gross in there. That's pretty nasty. Mm. Very nasty, actually. Yep, it's brown. What do we think about this? That'll clean up. We've got a 180 thermostat for it. We'll drop that in there and hope it stays cool because we haven't been able to really do anything or let this thing run for a while because, you know, can't put coolant in it. And we've got two new hoses, or at least the one new upper radiator hose, don't we? Yes. Sweet. Ah! Oh. Where are the bolts, Briar? They're over here. Briar, where are the bolts? Right there where I left them. I was not notified. This one's covered in RTV. That's why it was giving you such a hard time. Perfect, as usual. I'm here to ask you about your car's extended warranty. Sorry. <laughs> I need some hose clamps. Oh, I've got just the thing. Follow me. Which one do you think is the right one? Will that one work? Yeah. Great job. <laughs> Thank you, Rogo, for the fantastic hose clamps. Now it won't rotate, but it's on there. Should have put some juice on it. Yeah. That would have been the smart thing to do, but we're not here doing smart things anymore. I probably should do that after the AC compressor's on, shouldn't I? That would probably. Yeah, okay. So we've got AC compressor back in. We've got the upper radiator hose back in with a new thermostat. Everything's bolted down, so when we actually crank this thing up, we should be able to fill it up with coolant and turn the air on. No, I'm just kidding. It probably doesn't work. But we have all the belts, hoses, everything back in order and it runs well it runs i mean we still got to do a little tuning to it but it does run you have a you have a snappy one-liner for me um like you're normal i haven't thought of anything yeah. see I didn't, I didn't plan ahead yeah what happens when you don't plan ahead you don't get paid Whoa! gotta run straight water then we'll add some antifreeze to it but this is the first time i we'll actually get to let this thing sit here and idle What the heck? There it is. We've got some timing issues or a plug wire off. Hold on. Let's uh, <laughs> let's diagnose why it runs like dookie right now. I cranked the timing up a little bit to see if that would help something because it was still loose. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, distributor was still loose. That's on me. I gotta tighten it down, but it runs better now. He's gonna pull it up on the lift. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna watch him. It's low on fluid. <laughs> Hit the brake. Is it not stopping? Barely, okay, you're good. We gotta adjust the brakes on it.
might have to ah, yeah. give it the hammer. There you go. Oh god! <laughs> I thought I saw my life flash before my eyes. Perfect. Well, there's our problem. As you can see, the seal on the inside is busted, so transmission fluid's been getting past it this entire time. So we're gonna replace that real fast, and hopefully that fixes our situation. Yep. All righty, good as new. Well, we got the car back on the ground, and it really doesn't run that great. Every time you crank it, it kind of rattles, it backfires. So Briar is gonna pull a spark plug out of here. It's black and it's probably fouled, but it's not terrible. But I think we might go ahead and replace them anyway, just to be on the safe side, because they do look a little older. Chris Taylor and I were in uh, Wendy's one night. This is back when I was right after high school. We were in Wendy's one night and we pulled up to the drive through to get us something to drink so we could ride around and see who was the car. Like I said, back then we rode around and we drove. And um, we just wanted to see what was up there, who was up there riding around and where everybody was going to be hanging out. And got to the drive through and the spark plug just came out. So of course, if anyone knows what the spark plug looks like or sounds like when it's not in the car, it goes pop, 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 pop. So here we were looking all nice and cool and we pulled up to the drive through and this thing will pop, 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 pop. I said, Chris, he, Chris looked at me, I said, I don't know what's wrong. So we pulled over in the parking spot and I put, um, raised the hood on it. And I looked and I said, the spark plugs. So I went in the trunk and got my tools out and I put the spark plug back in, got our drinks and we headed on out. <laughs> we cleaned up all the plugs, regapped all the plugs. Everything looks like it's good. Firing order's back in check. So Ryder's gonna fire it up and see if it runs any better. Seems to be. Give it a little rev. I think the timing's too high, but. Okay, we're good. It might be a little, like a, a fuzz too high, but that's much better. Give her a little rev. Oh yeah, she's got the power back. All right, kill it. Nice, that's much better. We're back up on the lift because we noticed that uh, when we got all the wheels back on, that the upper ball joints, well, they're shot. Show us, Briar. It's hard to tell, but there's a lot of movement up and down on the ball joint. We looked up inside there and you can actually see the ball joint moving. So went ahead and bought two brand new ones. We got to take all the wheels off again. It's gonna be a lot of fun trying to figure this thing out, but never done GM ball joints before, but I know it's a hassle. So here we go. Ready? Yep. All right, there's the new ball joint in. We went ahead and just uh, put a little tack weld. What it did on the new ones, it presses in and it's got this little screw ring right here. The two little tacks on each side, that should hold her still. Now all we gotta do is just put it back in. It's always that simple, right? Theoretically. Well, there you have it. I know it didn't look like a lot on camera because we had a whole lot of work to do and a whole lot of just trial and error. Pulling the springs out is quite a hassle and then recompress them to get up, up in there. It's a lot of work. But uh, we got the upper control arms back in, new ball joints, everything's greased. There's no more play up and down anymore. And while we were at it, we went ahead and put some of these uh, Monroe OE Spectrum shocks back in. So now it should ride pretty good, especially having shocks up in the front. So everything's buttoned up. We have to re-bleed the brakes because we had to disconnect the brake hose because the whole spindle would flop over and it was pretty heavy. It's a lot of work. Man, I'll tell you what, but cutting them uh, ball joints loose, that was... Pretty hectic, but it's done. So we can put the wheels back on, get it off the lift and see if it rides any better. Well, it's time. Uh, we're gonna do our first trial run. We fixed a couple small things, uh, like the alternator had a power steering leak that Briar went ahead and fixed for us. So uh, it's still a little low on fluid, but we'll fix that when we get back. We're just gonna try and see how many gears does it have, do the brakes wanna work? See how many gears we got. 
There's two. Got some flat spotted tires. That's three. Not bad. See how the suspension with our new shocks and ball joints are good. If the speedometer's correct, we hit 35 miles an hour. <laughs> All right. See how she does a little... <laughs> feel the, these, these wheels and tires are wobbly. Yeah, it's got, I mean, three gears, great. I mean, I'll tell you what, that pays off because we have been fighting this thing for... It's been... It's been, yeah, pretty much since day one, but it's been months. We've, it may not seem, like, I know this is one video. We've had this car for probably two and a half months, going on three. And I just work on it when I can, but there's been so many little things that's fought us with this car, and it finally runs and drives. Even though it ain't perfect, it's definitely better. After college, I drove that car, but as far as fuel-wise, I needed something that was a little bit more efficient. 93, 92, 93, I think it was. I parked it after that and I may have driven it to work a few a couple of weeks or something like that, but I never no, I never drove it after that too much. And at that point in time I had found a, uh, I had an eighty three Seville, the slantback. The man that lived next door, his brother in law came out there were pouring concrete over here and he had an eighty three out here, but he had for sale sign in it. And at that time I, I looked at it, my dad said it had a forty one hundred engine in it. He said, Don't get it, but because of the engine. And I, I, I love the car and I bought it anyway. Didn't have any issues with it, no issues at all. But that's when I parked this car, when I got the 83. I parked it and I, I started doing more restoration work on it and uh, slowly doing more stuff to it as I, as I got older. And of course I parked it and I had it covered and I just started taking care of it like a time capsule. And I said, I don't want to continue to drive it every day because I don't want nothing to happen to it. And that's when I got, got out of it. So remember these? These are some uh, wire wheel knockoffs. And they're okay, but we've got something better. Check this out. Now these are 235 75-15s, and they've got the inch and a half white wall. They look original, they're radials, they're gonna ride nice. And we even found really, really nice hubcaps in the trunk and cleaned them up pop these onto here. Uh, these were wheels that I had on a mid-90s Chevy truck and they worked. In the same bolt pattern and it held onto that lip very nicely and my golly did this thing look good. I mean that's going to change the whole look of the car. And then on the back, check this out, we got fender skirts mounted back on and whew, tuck and tire. And now they don't rub. I mean we had the hardest time getting those knockoff wheels off of the back. but these actually fit very nicely and they're supposed to. So that's what's great about it. And we put a little bit of the trim back on here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is back it out, wash it, and then take it for a drive. And then we're gonna go show it to Reggie and see what he thinks. This is our second official test because first one, uh, everything was bad, you know, basically. It ran okay, but it just wasn't really happy. This is finally, after getting ball joints, after getting shocks, after getting tires, after fixing a lot of things with tuning, this thing should hopefully be better. I mean, I, I, I know these Cadillacs are known for being cars that just ride very well and very smooth, and I'm excited to see that. This is actually the first time I've ever driven a Cadillac besides the one I worked for Richard Petty, but I just drove it around the parking lot. I, I didn't even get to drive it on the road. So I'm excited to see how these things handle and how they do. I mean, to be a two-door coupe, look how big this, I mean, there's so much room in this car. It's huge. But after how long, how long have we been working on this car, Briar? Oh God, three months. I think it's been four. I think we got it back in November and it's February currently. And we just had been working on it here and there as we could in between projects. Man, does it float. Wow. 40 miles an hour, no crazy vibrations, no 
weird noises that I can tell. These tires are nice. I really like these tires. That honestly, the tires and the hubcaps on this car completely changed the look on it. We're doing 55 miles an hour, and this thing is just cruising. I mean, it really is a testament to how good these cars were built. I mean, with a little minor work, this car is totally, totally good. I, mean, I love this thing. It rides great. It kind of makes me want to get my own Cadillac. But that was 55, 60 miles an hour right there, and it was just totally floating. Like, no problem whatsoever. Brakes are great. Oh, on a dime just about. Love that. The power brake booster was giving us trouble because the line going from the manifold, the vacuum port, to the brake booster was so small it didn't have enough volume of air to actually uh, be effective, pretty much. So now that we fixed that, we changed that line, this thing's a totally different car and uh, the brakes feel so much better. Dude, the quadrajets, the, the quadrajets, I love them. You get those quadrajets and thermoquads, they sound so good. I used to race in this car a lot. I did, I did a lot of street racing, and um, I remember my mom, she had, they, had bought a, they bought a 90, 96 Cadillac. It was a 96, it was like my Roadmaster, but it had the LT1 in it. And I had just had this engine rebuilt. It was either Mother's Day or Father's Day. I can't remember which holiday it was, but they, they, everyone come, always came home for those holidays. And we were posted up at the lights, and she, she loved to race and I loved to race. And I said, I can't let her win. I can't let her beat me in this car. I said, I don't know, I got an old car, but so I dropped it down in the second to low range. And I got ready and I gave, I was on the gas a little bit and foot on the brake. I said, cause she's gonna wear me out. I don't know, and she's gonna love it. She's gonna love to be able to beat me cause she's never beat me in anything that I've ever had. So I said, I stood up on it and I waited. When that light turned green, I put to, put it to the floor and I, I had to give it to, I gave it its all. And when I, it started spinning, I had drove and driven, I guess another car length and a half in front of her. And she said, all she was doing was spinning. She couldn't ever hook up. I'm glad she didn't hook up cause she would have left me now that I know what LT1 is. <laughs> Gosh, they sound so good. And this car, it's beautiful. You know, to be pretty much mostly original, it's it's just a great car. And I really hope Reggie enjoys this thing. Cadillac, it's uh, ready to go back to Reggie. Feel pretty good about it. What do you think, Briar? I think it's ready. This is going to be really cool because this is something that you know you don't really come across a story like this very often, and to see his excitement is that's really what's keeping me going right now. So, without further ado, let's take it over to Reggie. There she is. Man, this thing is so man. It's so I, I, like I was telling him when I pull up, it's so beautiful. I said, my dad, out of all the cars he had. Out of all the Cadillacs, he said this was his favorite one. Man, look at it. Hey, we got tons of thumbs up. We were driving it around. Oh, people loved it. Let me tell you, you, you passed my mailman. I saw your car. He said, I thought you I thought you was in that car taking turn up in roads. I said, what you mean? He said, man, I thought our car was flying down through there. He said, it, he said, it runs. Now it runs. He said, it runs. Man, Dylan, man, I could hug you, man. I could hug you, man. Bring it in. Thank you, man. You yes, brought sir. family. You brought you brought, bam, you brought family back to life. When I first got it painted years ago, I didn't want anybody to bump the dinner you know, to bump it because right. people back then would just they didn't care. Right. So I would take and park in the back parking lot, and that's where we had to park. And I would take up four parking spaces. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would, man, I would come back. And you know, so on certain days, you'd have classes, and everybody would be in class, and it'd be hard to find parking. But I would park all in the very back. But you know, I would still get notes on my car. You need to learn how to drive. <laughs> you got the wheels, the nice wheels, man. I love those. I love that white wall. Where did you find it? That, how did you find that white wall? Well, we, like you said, you you said you wanted a two-inch wide white wall, but the best we could find in a radial for a good price was these inch and a half. And, that's, oh, man, they, but that's fine. It looks, I think they look. It looks good. Fantastic. I mean, that's that made the car. In my opinion, that made the whole car with yeah. the new with those hubcaps like you wanted. That that just looks good to me. Yeah, because that's that's the way she came. It's a beautiful car, man. Thank you, Dylan. Yes, man, sir. thank you, <laughs> man. You, ah, you're a miracle. You're 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 God sent. Briar probably did most of it too. He, right. he, he, both did, of he did a lot of grunt work too. Honestly, you guys did. I mean, <laughs> I can't take all the. Credit. It went from not running. When after they sold that car and that stuff off of it to now, it's a drivable car again. Right. And I hope you enjoy it. I mean, it's it does. You know, it's got some quirks here and there that needs taken care of. But I mean, now that you're able to drive it and, and it, use it, fix it, you can do some stuff yeah. and still enjoy it while you do it. Right. You know, that's that's the main thing. Well, and the thing is, you having that foresight to not take it somewhere where it could possibly get hurt or damaged is why it's the way that it is now. That's right. That's why it survived all this time. That's and, right. You know, and time does things to cars that just, you know, things happen. You know, you, right. you, the brakes cause issues just because it's, it just sat, and that's just right. how it is, you know. And then uh, people don't have the decency to not steal stuff off your car, and then it just causes problems for you that, that shouldn't right. happen. So that's... That, that's the best part about it is you know you being able to to get this car back and I, I'm I'm excited to see what you do with it. I'm look I'm gonna be looking for you at some shows now. Oh I'm going oh I'm going believe you me I'm going to some shows. <laughs> so you haven't heard this thing run in years then right? Years. It's like wow, this, this is the way I remember how this car was driving. I mean, it, it, wow, man, you brought it back. You brought this car back. She's alive. She's alive again. It rides like a Cadillac. That does. <laughs> it rides. It rides like a. This is the way Cadillac is supposed to ride. This car will have a nice sound system in it, like it used to have on my. Uh, when I would take it to Nashville, my cousins in Nashville always looked forward to us going out in it because back then you could park, you could, the people would park their cars as, as other people would ride through. Then people would drive and show off their cars. And of course I had an antique car and everybody else had new cars. And I was pulled up in my antique and it had the same sound system like they would have. So I had music, but my cousins, when we would all pile in the car, we would all pile in, we'd go park down on Jefferson Street and just sit there and just listen. We'd listen to our music and just watch the other cars they drive by. And we'd just go and just, because people used to drive, and just ride their cars back then. Gas was cheaper and you could do that, you know, but you know, people would get together and have like crews in. But now going forward, that's what I plan to do with this car. It's going to be going to, um, definitely going to go to Gatlinburg to that car show. That's a big one up there in Tennessee that I definitely want to go to. And there's another show up in Nashville that I, I want to take it to. This, that's that's a, a nice Cadillac show. So I definitely want to, as I continue going forward, uh, repair, put things on it that, put the parts back on it that's supposed to be on it, and take off any accessories that I put on it that don't belong there. And I want to keep the car back natural like it was. That's that's the main thing, except for the sound system. I have to have a good sound system in it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like down below, subscribe, comment, all those things. Let me know what you think about this car. If you want to see more of these vehicles be put back up on the road for after a long time of sitting, please go down in the link. Uh, there is a merch link there. Order a t-shirt and a sticker because all that money goes directly back into supporting stuff like this. And we appreciate every single one of you for all that you've done. And Reggie, I hope you enjoy your car. Man, thank you so much. I will. Oh man, I love it. I love it. I I'm so glad to have you back. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are, you are very, very good. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.